friends, Krista here. Thank you for stopping by Books and Jams. Today, I thought it's time to do another library book haul. It has been a couple months, I think, since I shared what I have checked out from the library. And then Chantelle at An Intentional Life asked if I wanted to do a little mini collab with her and share our library hauls on the same day. I'm like, that would be so much fun. Let's do it. And then we upped the ante where she looked at all the books that I have checked out and I looked at all the books that she has checked out and we picked one for the other person to read. I love going to the library and I sometimes have just a handful of books at home and sometimes I have a whole bunch. Today I have 11 to share with you. Some of these will end up going back to the library without being read, but I will definitely read the one that Chantel picked for me. So let's just go through what I have checked out. I'm gonna wait until the end to share the one that she picked and I wanna see if you can guess which one she which one she picked for me. The first three that I have are books that were on my anticipated reads list from the summertime. So I have Luck of the Titanic by Stacey Lee. This is a YA book, takes place on the Titanic, and we have Chinese brother and sister who are also acrobats. The sister finds out that somebody who's maybe in charge of the circus or something is going to be on the boat and she thinks this is their chance for her and her brother to get a job doing acrobatics. Obviously, it's the Titanic. Things don't go as planned. But also part of this book is the fact that any Chinese people who were on the Titanic were denied access to the United States whenever they were being rescued. They had to go somewhere else. And I'm not sure exactly the history of all of that, but I'm, in, I'm intrigued to hear the story, learn about this brother and sister. I love the twist of the acrobatics and also learning a little bit of history as well. So that just sounds so good. It was on my anticipated reads. Hopefully I can get to it. Then we have The Woman with the Blue Star by Pam Jenoff. This is a book I have checked out a couple times because I just haven't gotten to it yet. And it's really not that long. I should just dive right in. It would be my first Pam Jenoff book if I read it, but this is a book set in Poland during World War II. A young girl and her mother, I believe, hide out in the sewers. I think the mom is pregnant and the girl makes eye contact with a young Polish girl and like through the grates of the sewer. And I think that young Polish girl starts helping, helping them, I think. So I just sound so good. Really want to read that one. The other anticipated reads is, is actually a middle grade, That Thing About Bollywood by Supriya Kalkar. This is the one where the girl wakes up in one day, her whole life, everyone starts uh, acting as if they're in a Bollywood movie. So singing, breaking it out into song and dance, and it just sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Those are the end of the anticipated reads, but I might as well do the other two middle grades that I have. Um, this one has been on my want to read list for quite a while, The Bone Sparrow by Zana Fre 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 Freilan. And I believe I heard Katie from Life Between Words talk about this ages ago, and that's when I first put it on my my want to read list. And this is about a young girl, I believe, at a refugee camp in Australia. And I'm not sure where she's originally from, but I just know that it's going to be heartbreaking, but also teach me about something that I just am not that familiar with. So I'm looking forward to reading that one, hopefully. And then I grabbed book two in the Mysterious Benedict Society. This one is the Mysterious Benedict Society and the Perilous Journey by Trenton Lee Stewart. I I enjoyed the first book in this series. I thought it was okay. Uh, but then I watched the show. <laughs> I am currently watching the show on, on Disney Plus and absolutely loving it. So I'm like, you know what? I should give book two a chance and see if I want to continue with the rest of the series. I don't know how many are in the series, but I saw this at my library. So I threw it in my bag with everything else. I want to give the series more of a chance. Um, I enjoyed the first one. It didn't blow me away, but I enjoyed it. Then I have a YA that is my patron pick for the month of August. So I will definitely be reading this one this month. And that is The School for Good and Evil. Actually, is this middle grade as well? This is technically middle grade as well by Salman Chinani. This one takes place at a school, I believe. Um, well, there's two schools, the school for good and the school for evil. And these two girls from the same village, one of them who kind of is stereotypically good and the other is stereotypically evil, but they get assigned to the opposite school of what they everyone expects from them. Uh, so I don't know much more than that. I have heard that this first book in the series is fantastic. And then the series kind of goes downhill. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I think about it. And so this one will most definitely be read in the month of August. I have five more and they're just kind of random picks, things that I found on the shelf. Uh, some I've heard of, some I hadn't. We'll see what I can get to. But this is My Oxford Year by Julia Whalen. In this one, we follow a young girl. It's kind of a coming of age story. We follow Ellie, Ella, 
She's an American who has had one dream since she was a young teen, and that is to go to Oxford. Finally, when she's in her 20s, receives a Rhodes Scholarship to attend Oxford. And when she's preparing to go, she also gets this opportunity to work on this campaign for a future president here in the States. She gets a kind of, I think she gets permission to take her year to go to Oxford and then come back and continue to work on the campaign. But while she's in Oxford, she has a lot of different experiences that make that decision to come home a lot more difficult. And of course, there's going to be a little bit of romance in here as well. I just think that that sounds like a fun summary back to school type of read. I'm excited for that. Float Plan by Trish Dollar. I showed in, I don't know, was it an Instagram video or a vlog? At some point, I went to the library and showed this real quickly, and a couple people said, this is such a fun book, and it just looks very summery, right, out on a boat. I don't know. I didn't even look at the summary of it. It just feels like summer to me. Bright, fun, boats. Since the loss of her fiancé, well, that doesn't sound bright and fun. <laughs> Anna has been shipwrecked by grief until a reminder goes off about a trip that they were supposed to take together. Impulsively, Anna goes to sea in their sailboat, intending to complete the voyage alone. But after a treacherous night's sail, she realizes she cannot do it by herself and hires Keen, a professional sailor, to help. Much like Anna, Keen is struggling with a very different future from the one he had planned. As romance rises with the tide, they discover that it's never too late to chart a new course. Aww. That definitely feels like a summer read. If I don't get to that this month, I might have to wait till next summer to read it. But it sounds like a, a fun contemporary summertime read. A very hyped book around here is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. It's much smaller than I expected. Um, I think this is one of those where every memory is recorded in a book. And there's a library that holds all of these books. You could kind of take your memories and put them in books so that you don't have to think about them. Um, but it's also kind of a sliding doors thing. I'm th I might be thinking of a different book. Let's see. The books in the Midnight Library enable Nora to live as if she had done things differently. Each one contains a different life, a possible world. Oh yeah, I was totally wrong. A possible world in which she made different choices that played out in an infinite number of ways, affecting everyone she knew as well as many people she never met. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every decision that she regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life. But things aren't what she imagined, of course. Yeah, I have heard some mixed things about this, and so I'm very curious to see what I will think about that one. I don't know. I grabbed this next one because it's an author that I just really like, and that's When We Were Young and Brave by Hazel Gaynor. This one takes place in China during World War II, which I just love that because I feel like it's a different side of the war than what I'm normally reading. Inspired by the true events surrounding the Japanese army's internment of teachers and children from a British-run missionary school. Set in China during World War II. This one is pretty chunky, but it definitely sounds right up my alley. So hopefully I can get to that one. And finally, this is just, I saw it as I was walking through the shelves and it, it just called to me. It looked very summery, Hawaii. A Song for the Stars by Elima Todd. It's a proper romance, which also is a draw for me. Know that it's set in Hawaii and on the sea. So it's another kind of boat type of a book. And I think there's a battle and she protects a wounded man. She's the daughter, second daughter of a chief. So she's got responsibilities for her, her country and her people. I don't know much about it at all, but it does look very summery, doesn't it? I think so. So can you guess out of all those, which one Chantel picked for me? I'm going to tell you right now. It's book two in the Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart. I'm really excited because I definitely want to continue this series and see if I want to read the whole series or will I just stop after book two. It is pretty chunky, but it's middle grade, so it goes pretty quickly. Oh, it is pretty <laughs> right up to the edge of the margins here. But I, I think it's quirky and fun and there's going to be a mystery in there and they're going to be out on a boat again. Clearly I had a boat thing going because four of these books have to do with a boat. <laughs> I would love to know what your thoughts are about any of these if you've read them. Do you see any here that you're like, oh yeah, Krista, that is definitely a Krista book. You need to read that one. <laughs> well, they're not even all in there. Let me move back. There we go. Yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. I need to set them down. Okay. And also, don't forget to hop over to Chantel's channel, Chantel at an Intentional Life. I will link her channel down below and see what her library haul is right now. What does she have checked out and which book did I pick for her to read? 
see if you could guess which one I picked for her. I don't know. Let's chat down in the comments below about these books, about anything else. You guys know I love talking with you down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. And I will be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye. Thank you.